Hi guys, so I'm gonna quickly go through the question two that we was the unseen portion. Um, so Kaki Limited is a manufacturing company that specializes in designer clothing. The company is listed on the JSE and has a reporting date of 30 June. Factory buildings are counted for in accordance with the cost model of IS-16 and factory buildings are depreciated over the useful life on a straight line basis. Machinery is accounted for in accordance with the cost model in IS-16 and is also depreciated over its useful life on a straight line basis. So on the 1st of July, 29, Kaki Limited purchased clothing fact a factory business from Lacoste Limited, an independent third party for 17 million. On the 1st of July, 29, the fair value of the net asset was 16,742. The South African receiver indicated that the above individual fair values of the asset will be deemed to be the cost when calculating the allowances for tax purposes. The factory building, machinery, and um, registered patent cannot generate cash flows independently as individual assets. On the 1st of July, the estimations were the factory building had a 10-year useful life, the machinery had a five-year useful life, and the registered patent had an indefinite useful life, and all had no residual value, or it was immaterial. Impairments. No impairment loss was recognized in respect of the clothing factory um, in 2010, 2011, 2012. There's also no indication of impairment in respect of any of the assets in the clothing factory in 2010, 2011, and 2012. On the 30th of June, 2013, there were indications that the clothing factory was impaired. Um, on this date, the value and use of the clothing factory amounted to 8,800,000. The value, this value was determined when taking into account the inventory and the provision to dismantle the factory building. The value and use was correctly calculated in terms of IS 36, impairment of assets by discounting future cash flows to a present value on the 30th of June, 2013. The fair value less cost to sale of disposal of the factory, the clothing factory amounted to 8,600,000 on the 30th of June, 2013. This amount is a market-based measurement. On the 30th of June, 2013, the following information is, is available in respect to the assets. Right, we had the factory building, we don't have a carrying amount, but the fair value less cost to sell is 3 million. The machinery was 3 million. Um, the registered patent was 2 million 200. Inventory was at 1 million 600, and the provision was at 820,000. So the required asks us to discuss the timing of the impairment testing relating to the net assets purchased from Lacoste Limited. Um, and then part B asks us to do the journal entries to account for the impairment loss on the building on the 30th of June, 2013. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna go through the principles um, with you guys. Um, with regard to the specific question. So in terms of the discussion, um, they're basically just asking for the, they're asking you to just discuss the timing. So when are we going to, um, the timing of the impairment, yeah. Testing, so when do we test the impairment, right? So important parts to like remember is that um, every year you must test for impairment um, for goodwill. So goodwill is a mandatory test. You can't um, not do that. <laughs> um, oh, 
Okay, forgive my spelling. Cool, All right, so that's done um, on an annual basis. Now, the question said that these assets do not, um, do not generate cash flows individually. So they do it as a unit. So it's not independent of cash flows. The cash flows aren't independent. So because of that, that basically indicates to us that we have a cash generating unit, right? So the actual factory building is a cash generating unit. So what you need to assess is whether or not, do I have a CGU or do I not have a CGU? Um, and in this question, it's clear, it was clearly there that we do have a CGU, cash generating unit, right? Now, inventory, we do not test um, impairment for. So IS2 um, is not in the scope. All right. So if you read IS 36, paragraph two, you'll see that this is actually not in scope. The reason for this is because in IS 2, we measure inventory at the lower of its residual, not its residual value, net realizable value, the net realizable value or its cost. So this has its own it has its own inherent impairment test. So you can never recognize or measure um, inventory at like more than what it's supposed to be. It's always going to like be at what it's actually like the actual value of it. So that's why it's not in scope. So I think it's important to just read through um, IS, the chapter two in IS 36 to see what is in scope. So this will guide you in knowing what to allocate impairment to and what not to allocate impairment to. Um, and because Kaki Limited actually paid 17 million and the fair value of the net asset values was 16 million 742, um, we have goodwill from that acquisition date, All right? Um, so, FS36 basically says that when I have a CGU, the goodwill is going to absorb my impairment um, loss first. Then I allocate that impairment loss to my other assets or yeah, in the CGU, right? Um, and then, like I said, we test impairment on a annual basis because it's mandatory in the standard. Um, yeah, there's nothing else that... I picked up on in the solution or even in the question that I think needed addressing. I think those are the main principles to take from this specific discussion question. Um, and then moving along to part B of the question. Um, so we did not have the carrying amount of the building. Um, so I think the first step would just be to calculate the carrying amount. for the factory building, All right? Well, yeah, the carrying amount, what I do have in the question is, I don't have, yeah. So it doesn't give me on that specific date how much my factory building was. But what I do have is I have the factory buildings, how much it was on date of acquisition, which is um, 20.9, which was valued at 5292 Right. And 
and then we depreciate at 10 years. Well, yeah, they said the useful life is at 10 years. Right, so it's going to be over 10. And then, so from 29 to 2013, we have six years that have passed, which then gives me a carrying amount of 3 million. 175, 200, and then the carrying amount of my machinery was given, which was 3,136, right? So then we had the patent, which was also given, which is at 2,240,000. Then we have the inventory, which is 160000. And then the provision to dismantle was also given at 820. Cool. And then the goodwill on the CGU, like I said, we purchased for 17 million. And then my actual net asset value at acquisition date was 16,742, which gives me a goodwill of 258. Right. And then this in total gives me a carrying amount of my CGU of 9,589,200. Now, um, IS38 says the recoverable amount is the higher of the value in use or the fair value less cost to sell. So in the question, they gave us um, both of those figures. And from that, we can see that the higher of both of those is the value in use at 8,800,000, right? Right. So that gives me an impairment loss. My total impairment loss is 789,200, right? So now we have to allocate this impairment according to the assets that are in scope, right? With IS-36. Now, from what I had previously said is that Goodwill is going to absorb the impairment loss first. All right, so first, okay, sorry, this is just the allocation, All right? My goodwill of 258,00, All right? And then now the remaining impairment loss that I have is going to be 531,200 because now I've it's been absorbed by the goodwill. Right. Happy. And then I'm going to allocate it, like I said, to the assets that are in scope, um, that are in scope of IS. Thirty-six, which would be the factory building. The machinery and the patent, right? The carrying amounts we did um, 
calculate above, but the total of that is going to be eight five five one two hundred, and we are remember allocating that five three one. 531200 impairment loss that I have. All right. So we have to, so when we allocate, we're going to allocate according to the weighting of each of these um, assets. So what you're going to do is you're going to take the factory building was at 3175, 200 for example. And then what I'm gonna do is I have to show the marker that 3175, 200 over my 8551, 200 is my weighting for the factory building and then I'm going to times that by my actual impairment loss of 531 200 and that's the impairment loss for the factory building and then you'll continue the same way with the machinery as well um, which is the 31 31 over the 855 one, 200, um, or you can just say this, still the same logic, which will give you your allocation. And then after the allocation of impairment, then you have to show the carrying amount after the impairment. So the actual question wasn't us calculating this, but this assists us in our actual calculation. What the actual question asked was for you to show the journals for each of these. So because it's impairment, it's going to go through my statement of profit and loss. So I'm going to debit impairment loss. Right. In the statement of profit and loss, I know that I'm going to have to reduce the, obviously I'm reducing the the factory building. The machinery. The patent. And the goodwill. Right. Um, these are all going to be credits. Um, And then my total impairment loss that was calculated originally was eight nine two hundred. So yeah, those are the general um, impairment. Um, it's pretty straightforward. If you guys have any questions with regard to this specific question, let me know. And also please send questions for the quest limited question that was. Um, for today as well for us to discuss um any principles that you guys want to go through and yeah thanks so much bye guys